І, друзі, можемо розпочинати. Воно співає? Співає. Трансляція розпочалася. Можемо. Good afternoon, dear friends. We start this press conference. This is a broader event than traditional press conference. It looks it will take long. We are working here online in Ukraine Crisis Media Center and in the internet on the internet we you may see our broadcast through Facebook page of Ukraine uh, Institute National Commission uh, on standards of uh, uh, state language and uh, on the tube uh, uh, and also you may hear English interpretation uh, on the channel of Ukraine Crisis Media Center. This event is called the Prospects of Teaching and Learning Ukrainian as Foreign Language. And the organizers of this event are the Ukrainian Institute, the National Commission on Standards of State Language, supported by the Ministry of Education and uh, Ukraine Crisis Media Center, and we thank them all. About our agenda, we have uh, Anna Palevach, head of the Department of Communication and Public Diplomacy at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Ukraine. And uh, we were surprised we, we have such a department of communication public diplomacy at the ministry. Online with us, we hope Rima El Juvaidi, general director of the director of the strategic planning and the European integration at the Ministry of Education and Science. Tatiana Filievska, Creative Director at the Ukrainian Institute. Orisa Demska, Head of National Commission on Standards of State Language. And uh, also online with us is Irina Klitschkovska, Director of the International Institute of Education, Culture and Communication with Diaspora. So, the issue concerning promoting Ukrainian language, proactive position of Ukraine as a state and the Ukrainians as community. In promoting Ukrainian language, this is really important issue and it has been important for a long time. We have more proactive position and uh, It is connected with defense position, passive position. But here we have many aspects. Because some people who do not directly relate it to this problem, they cannot even understand them. We, of course, we want that people know Ukrainian language, that people uh, study this language, learn it. and. Uh, this um, area of Eastern Europe, this post-totalitarian, post-communist uh, communist countries, we believe that here uh, we need a Ukrainian language as a point of entry, not Russian language like it was 
like it is seen today when foreign experts, diplomats, uh, ambassadors of foreign nations, when they enter here, they uh, usually they go through Russian faculty of the relevant university. And uh, from the very start, from young years, they um, have this experience and uh, we may witness that in Europe and uh, in other uh, countries we may see, but in Europe we see the situation clearly. So this is not only a linguistic question, question not only narrow uh, cultural aspect. We believe that this is a, an issue, one of the aspects of our survival, survival of Ukraine and uh, our uh, subjectivity. So I do not know who is going to speak next, as it is stated in the, on the agenda. Uh, um, so, uh, uh, good afternoon. So, uh, Director of uh, International Institute of Education, Culture, and uh, uh, this uh, is my first uh, public speaking after I returned from abroad. Uh, so, this is not only about Support. This is one of the priorities to the language at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and uh, it is important for our foreign departments as well. For statistics, I will present some figures. So this is a representative of the Ministry of uh, Foreign Affairs, sorry. Um, so you may find uh, this information in different sources, but I would like to present information uh, that uh, correspond to our agency. So I, w I worked as a simultaneous translator. So please, uh, in order to present this information to our audience, please, uh, Mm, present information slower. Several interesting figures. Um, maybe they will be of interest to you. 69 faculties of 25 in 25 countries. Uh, they teach Ukrainian. These are uh, Slavic faculties. We have only several faculties of Ukrainian studies. So there are Sunday schools and uh, uh, we really hope that they will help. From one side, these are amateurs. Uh, often they are professional teachers, but they are working um, as volunteers and the Ministry of Foreign Affairs support the schooling. We have 193 Sunday schools in 45 countries of the world, not in Canada, and I was surprised by this, but in Romania, in different uh, institutions where Ukrainian language is studied. We have kindergartens, there are some courses in six countries courses of Ukrainian. And we spoke about it with Tatiana. This is the method of teaching and support of language that is not studied till the end by us. And I believe that it has many prospects for popularization of Ukrainian language abroad. Unfortunately, today we do not have any Ukrainian school uh, that teaches not only in Ukrainian, but that they provide uh, 
teaching in Ukrainian starting from the first grade to the final grade. There is distance school, distance learning school. I have my personal attitude towards the school. It uh, is not functional abroad because the school proposes distance learning of all subjects in accordance with curricula of Ukrainian school. There is no sense for Ukrainian children, even for the children of diplomats. In this case, children, they need to learn in two schools at once and that they do not like one of the schools and if we take decision to the benefit of Ukrainian school, we deprive our children of uh, um, uh, social experiences. I believe that it should be reformed. And to ask the opinion of foreign, of Ukrainians who live abroad uh, on how it should function. In any case, it is a competitor to Sunday schools. This is a good instrument, but unfortunately, as it is now, it doesn't have good prospects or interest abroad. We are trying by different methods to popularize Ukrainian language. There are mixed commissions, there are three commissions, two more active, uh, Ukrainian and Romanian commission and the Ukrainian and Slovak commission in the framework of which they deal with issues of uh, teaching Ukrainian. Also Ukrainian and Hungarian commission and uh, there are some problems But we also have good prospects even in this commission. If we have time, I would like to go into more detail about this, maybe about whether there are some schools, Ukrainian schools in Hungary. No, no schools with the full teaching of Ukrainian. Nowhere we have it. Yeah, this is the case. Sorry. So, what uh, about the role of uh, diplomatic institutions abroad? Preservation and development of Ukrainian language support of Ukrainian organizations that work abroad. It uh, exists in this way. Once again, one figure I would like to mention. In 2019, due to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, 164 projects uh, were supported. This is about financing for these uh, schools, uh, Sunday schools, uh, provision of materials, starting from manuals to methodological guidance and um, this was financing that was provided. This was full-scale financing. No, these schools that work abroad, they are usually provided the help by the countries where they are. They provide premises and opportunities to teach and symbolic payment from children, maybe 
five up to ten dollars, uh, depending on the country. But during after 2014, when this problem was adopted, uh, schools are well financed. But this is not only about the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Big role is provided to Ukrainian Sunday schools. The methodology is confusing how, but they should present the needs properly. But uh, nearly all the needs of these schools were covered. I hope that now we are also heard by uh, those who are concerned about this. Uh, so you should express your needs, state them. You should knock and then they will open to you. So it is uh, a painful issue and uh, direct uh, in Frankfurt, where I worked uh, at principal of Sunday school, she said that the issue of certification was important, the certification of knowledge. Uh, without this, any financing doesn't have this uh, really, doesn't provide motivation for learning. So we get salary when we work, when we study, uh, we should get some certificate. Those who le uh, study Ukrainian language in the Sunday schools, for them it is really important to get the certificate uh, that they know this uh, language, Ukrainian language is foreign language. This is a, a question to the Ministry of Education. This is the most important support. And uh, there is an experiment carried out by Ukrainian school in uh, Frankfurt. They signed a contract with the uh, Lviv University, named after Franco, uh, to um, have exams and certification for students because uh, in high school, uh, when children are 15, 16, children lose their interest in studying these lang uh, this language because they uh, um, do not have proper motivation to learn. So I would like to give the floor to the Ministry of Education and Science. Directorate of Strategic Planning and the European Integration at the Ministry. Um, this is the question to the General Director. Rima El Juvaidi. Juvaidi. Uh, let's try to get connection. No proper sound. Do you hear me? Yeah, I hear you. Do you have a sustainable methodology uh, in accordance to which the tests are taken in Ukrainian? Something like TOEFL or any program of any foreign language that you may study here in Ukraine. Thank you for raising this issue. This issue of introduction of certification exam is an urgent and important issue. And we believe that we will be able to um, solve this issue together with the National Commission. And this issue is on the agenda today. But at the moment, we do not have such an exam. So your introductory word, please. Thank you. I would like to support my colleague from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. And I would like to say that for the ministry, 
of education and science, the popularization of Ukrainian language as a means of um, communication uh, in the world is one of the main priorities. And during the last years, we have uh, some results in this context. We have mechanisms of uh, referral of teachers uh, to uh, work in schools where uh, subjects are taught in Ukrainian. And we have such an example. Last year, we selected three teachers to refer them to Riga and Ukrainian school due to the budget funds. Unfortunately, there were some organizational challenges and pandemic forced us to correct these plans. But now we speak with uh, our colleagues from Latvia to resolve this issue, in order that these, child, uh, these teachers be able to go to work in the school. And also we cooperate and organize Uh, provision of uh, manuals and additional literature to foreign schools and uh, embassies and educational institutions may uh, address us and last year about 4,000 manuals were provided on the site of the ministry. We have a separate uh, division uh, for Ukrainian schools abroad and we are trying to enter references to uh, electronic manuals and other materials that uh, are ready for use. Interesting experience. This is international contest. Uh, uh, Ukraine, be the best Ukrainian teacher abroad. Uh, and um, uh, this year, uh, the teacher from Edmonton won this contest. And we hope that this contest uh, provides for popularization of Ukrainian language abroad. This year, we also plan to hold the uh, summer school for foreigners. Unfortunately, uh, because of pandemics and quarantines, uh, we uh, delayed the school, but we hope that next year we will be able to implement this. Also, we provide financing uh, for this project of uh, this uh, budget and also uh, about certification exam. Uh, this is an important issue, the issue of standardization of requirements to the level of teaching of Ukrainian as foreign language. And we have hoped that uh, due to cooperation with the commission, we will be able to move these issues forward and to popularize the Ukrainian language. Thank you, Rima. Next speaker. Tatiana Filievska about the tasks of the Ukrainian Institute concerning teaching and promoting of Ukrainian language. Please, you are given the floor. Thank you very much. For us, this is really an important event today. And uh, we will continue to promote uh, Ukrainian language as foreign language, and we welcome uh, the creation of the National Commission that uh, will be a reliable partner. We were waiting for this institution in order to continue to work in this direction. So uh, the broadening of the use of Ukrainian language in the world, this is one of five main goals of the Ukrainian Institute. The Ukrainian Institute, first of all, has the aim to promote Ukraine in the world by the means of cultural diplomacy. Our task in the context of the Ukrainian language is at, le at least during five next years to provide understanding in the world that uh, Ukrainian language is a separate language and one of 10 most used European languages as it is shown by research. 
and we want that Ukrainian language be the language of uh, use in professional um, area and in public space. And of course, this is an important means of reaching our biggest aim uh, to reinforce our subjectivity because the, uh, the language is the most important element of identity of Ukrainian nation and thus uh, the promotion of Ukrainian language in the world will provide for the establishment of uh, subjectivity of Ukrainian nation in the world. And uh, as you, Yuri mentioned, and we see it daily, that Ukrainian language still is not seen on the radars in the uh, academic community. And quite often, everywhere, even in the academic community, Ukrainian studies are actually part of Russian studies. And Ukrainian studies, uh, in general, are not very popular, and they actually almost are not on demand among the students. We clearly understand that promoting language, we should work uh, at multiple levels. That is, first of all, to draw attention and emphasize the uh, specificity of Ukrainian language, the fact that this is uh, something independent and uh, separate. Uh, some years ago, we started to work on the audio guides in leading uh, world museums. Uh, this is our joint project with the Ministry of uh, uh, Foreign Affairs and the First Lady, Madame Zelenska, joined uh, this project and uh, Several uh, um, uh, audio guides uh, uh, are recorded as of now. The next our project was a global campaign, Kiev, not Kiev, um, and uh, the true and correct uh, spelling of uh, the capital of Ukraine. Uh, is now registered and reflected in many international um, uh, uh, airports, uh, publications, etc. We see our task in uh, uh, establishing and introduction of correct Ukrainian spelling uh, 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 of Ukrainian toponyms and uh, anthroponyms. Uh, for example, Alexander Arhipenko and Alexander Bogomazov are spelled uh, in wrong way in the uh, global museums around the world. Quite often, to, to do this very small and uh, uh, allegedly negligible correction, we have to approach uh, to the museum uh, and uh, maintain a long negotiations uh, with, with it. Mm, uh, 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 but uh, th this is uh, quite important uh, for, for us. Uh, and this is important to emphasize Ukraine's uh, role and uh, uh, as a subject uh, uh, in the world. Uh, uh, later today, we will describe um, our further work uh, on uh, uh, on the uh, systemic changes. Uh, we expect it to be um, a long-term task. Uh, uh, in now, having signed our memorandum with the National Committee, we are drafting our road ma ma map 
up uh, about teaching of Ukrainian language as uh, uh, one of the foreign languages uh, uh, around Europe or around the world, uh, and thus to ensure uh, uh, better access to Ukrainian language um, everywhere where there is demand uh, on it. Um, uh, uh, Although our uh, Ukrainian institute is not the uh, language teaching establishment, uh, and in order to implement this project, we have to establish cooperation with language courses, language training courses, etc. Uh, uh, also, uh, besides uh, provision of this access to Ukrainian language uh, uh, courses, uh, we uh, uh, should uh, introduce Ukrainian documents, uh, documentaries, uh, archives uh, to the uh, global um, research community and allow access to these interesting resources to uh, the scholars all around the world. Quite recently, we presented the establishment of the Dragoman Prize, a special prize for Ukrainian translators. That prize was established jointly by Ukrainian Institute and Ukrainian Pan Club. And this shows how seriously we take Ukrainian language, Ukrainian translation, and Ukrainian studies. Uh, thank you, Tatiana. And actually, uh, uh, this brings us to the chair, chair lady of the uh, Ukrainian um, uh, National Committee on the State language, uh, on the national language standards. Uh, so my question to you, whether today in Ukraine we have any uh, textbooks which might be compared to the uh, language textbooks published by Goethe Institute, British Council, Alliance Francaise, etc. Uh, thank you for this question. I uh, will answer it, but a bit later. First of all, I would like to thank to my colleagues who are here today for the support of our uh, organization, which is quite new. Um, uh, and we appreciate the efforts of the Ukrainian Institute with whom we have signed our first memorandum. Uh, uh, now, our task is to draft a roadmap and build up but the way uh, forward for our national language and to allow it to develop freely among other European languages. Now, I, uh, I would like to answer your question about uh, uh, comparisons. Uh, mm, if I uh, say uh, no, it wasn't. It would not be true. You cannot compare uh, the uh, the things which are uncomparable. Even if you look at the Russian language, Ukrainian language could not be compared to any of the uh, imperial uh, scale languages, so to say. If you compare Ukrainian language with the, the languages that used to be the languages of, min of national minorities in big empires like the Poles, the Czechs, the Slovaks, uh, the um, Hungarians, etc. Uh, uh, if you look at the uh, 
uh, English language, French, German, we cannot say that we have text uh, books comparable to um, uh, the uh, textbooks in those languages. But if we take Polish language, uh, we could say yes, our Yabloko um, textbook could be easily comparable to to the Polish uh, um, examples. For example, we have uh, uh, Ms. Danuta Mazur, uh, who, uh, who has been teaching Ukrainian language for Poles for many years, and uh, uh, she uses the textbooks which are rather attractive, and the result is quite satisfactory. But the issue now is to understand where we are going, what is our way, what is our route and what uh, uh, should be the road map uh, this is the uh, uh, the huge task for us i understand that today in the world there is a huge demand for foreign languages uh, in general not only for ukrainian language quite recently uh, quite recently in Gießen uh, University that's near Frankfurt I had foreigners neither Ukrainians nor even Slavonic students they uh, uh, had chosen Ukraine as a subject for their masters uh, 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 studies, uh, uh, etc. But uh, uh, the uh, Ukrainian studies should not be the subject of enthusiasm. When we approach to Ukrainian language and studies as a discipline, we immediately find out that there are neither international certificate in the language qualification, etc. ITA is uh, uh, a, a, a international testing organization which uh, uh, develops uh, uh, language exams and certificates and uh, our uh, purpose now, our objective is to become a member of this organization that is to draft uh, all the um, textbooks, uh, uh, exam content, and certificates. As of uh, uh, now, we uh, uh, know 25 members of this international organization, and I believe that uh, we have to become the 26th member of uh, this organization. To become a member of uh, LT, uh, we have uh, to to do our homework. Uh, uh, what we have done had done already. Um, long ago, in uh, uh, late nineteen. Uh, uh, 80s, early 1990s, when the Soviet Union collapsed, uh, with so many uh, Canadians, Americans who came to Ukraine and they wanted to study Ukrainian language. Uh, it was at that time, it was my first experience of. Uh, teaching Ukrainian as a foreign language to foreign students. And uh, at that time, we had to determine first what was Ukrainian language as a foreign language. Uh, almost 30 years had passed, and uh, I am able to quote uh, what does it mean Ukrainian language as a foreign language? This is the uh, uh, accumulation of uh, uh, skills and theoretical knowledge which a, uh, a person of non-Ukrainian origin had acquired uh, 
and is able to communicate uh, uh, sufficiently uh, in Ukrainian. Mm, uh, so this is uh, the uh, standard which will be applied to people both in Ukraine and abroad. Mm. Also, we had established uh, uh, the uh, requirements to all the levels from A1 to C1, and uh, we continue our work in this area. I would like to warn you that we are not alone who work in this area. We uh, rely on a huge experience of Ukrainian language teachers who accumulated their um, practice and experience uh, for almost 30 years. And the achievements of all those people have to be uh, brought together now, summarized, uh, uh, lessons learned, and presented as uh, one core. Our committee on uh, the lang Ukrainian language standardization um, is a legal authority which has to approve the language standards and uh, we plan to cooperate in our work with Ukrainian uh, Institute with uh, language teach Ukrainian language teachers um, and with scholars without uh, uh, all those uh, components of this partnership, we won't be able to speak about Ukrainian language as a language as a, as about a soft force. Mm, we believe that Ukrainian level could become a, a um, a good soft power in the um, this new post COVID nineteen virtual world, uh, and uh, uh, we should make this soft power uh, the top priority for our organization. Uh, thank you so much. I dare to interrupt you because we're receiving questions from our uh, 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 audience. On the one hand, on the other hand, uh, we have m one more uh, speaker today. This is Miss uh, Kluchkovska, uh, chair chairperson from the International Institute of Education culture and uh, relations with diaspora. Uh, thank you so much. I am not boring. I am happy that now we are uh, capable to um, uh, uh, to uh, stir up this work. Not everybody know uh, us. We are uh, the uh, uh, in Institute, uh, International Institute of Education, Culture and uh, Relations with the Aspera from the Lviv Polytechnica. Uh, uh, our uh, experience during uh, the last 25 years allowed us not only study the issue but formulate our strategy in this area, which responds to, which is response to a demand. Uh, uh, in situation when the country, the, the government was unable to satisfy the demand for foreign language. Uh, we have studied the uh, uh, situation with the demand uh, for Ukrainian language. We have held five congresses with the diaspora, five conferences devoted to the role of Ukrainian language in the world, then five seminars of Ukrainian language as a foreign language, and the International Forum of uh, Ukrainian uh, Sunday and Saturday schools all around 
around the world. We have carried out a series of uh, uh, sociological research about the prestige of Ukrainian language among foreign students. And uh, the um, uh, turning point uh, in this issue was uh, e e when the uh, hearings in Ukrainian parliament were held. Those hearing, parliamentary hearings were devoted uh, to uh, the Ukrainian language as foreign language. And uh, since uh, that moment, under leadership of Ms. Grinevich, the former Minister of Education and Science, uh, uh, the um, work was uh, started. Unfortunately, uh, COVID-19 had hampered this work slightly, but nevertheless, uh, we move forward. As of now, there is a, a sufficient global demand on Ukrainian language. Uh, 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 there is uh, the uh, interest from diaspora and labor migrants who had established a network of uh, Saturday and Sunday language schools. The next group uh, which uh, uh, expresses demand, uh, these are um, uh, migrants uh, to Ukraine who arrive uh, and, and international students. Uh, these are foreigners of non-Ukrainian language, diplomatic core workers, etc. Uh, uh, um, so studies of uh, uh, Ukrainian language in diaspora is support is satisfied by Saturday and Sunday schools, for example, in Canada. They are under the auspice under NGO, uh, of NGOs and churches. Unfortunately, those schools do not have licenses for educational activity. Uh, in Poland, we have also in Poland and in Latvia two language schools where we have Ukrainian, uh, po po old Ukrainian population and the system of Slavistic studies. In the times when there were no standards of Ukrainian language as foreign language, uh, many people had doubts uh, uh, whether, whether it is possible uh, in general. We nevertheless managed to, to uh, publish a series of our own textbooks of Ukrainian uh, language as uh, um, foreign language. Uh, we offer attractive textbooks from A1 level, uh, step one, step two. These are comprehensive textbooks uh, for teachers, for students. Also, we have uh, an attractive uh, textbook, a trip around Ukraine. And uh, uh, the next uh, uh, is uh, B1, B2, and C1 level textbook, A Key to Ukraine. Uh, um, uh, the next textbook will be devoted to Lesa Ukrainka, famous Ukrainian poetries. We had also created the first uh, Ukrainian language 
portal. It requires modernization, but we do not have enough funding for that. We would be very grateful to those who might invest in that modernization. Currently, we are establishing the online course in the Ukrainian language. We had held 13 summer schools in Ukrainian language open for diaspora and uh, foreigners in Ukraine. And uh, currently we are working on, uh, currently we work on the uh, educational platform in Ukrainian language, which will unite together um, Ukrainian Sunday and Saturday schools, uh, Ukrainian studies chairs uh, and departments all around the world, uh, and uh, museums uh, uh, devoted to Ukrainian language and studies abroad, etc. I can speak. Uh, I can speak long, but uh, I will try to to say it very uh, shortly. As about uh, demands uh, for, of schools and requirements, first of all, they need the certificates. Uh, even if you create the certification and testing centers whether we the next question will be whether we will be implement this into practice of course we have made a lot of uh, training materials we have to uh, develop qualifications of our teachers uh, We have to develop a single uh, program f uh, for uh, language uh, uh, schools, uh, Saturday and Sunday schools, and foreigners studying Ukrainian language. This requires a series of discussions, of course. We have insufficient number of teachers. I have the list of our teachers, uh, uh, the list of our recommendations from the year 2006. And actually, those recommendations uh, have been remaining the same since uh, the year 2006 to, to produce standards, to introduce certification, to become a member of LTE, etc. I have uh, brought together a, a big uh, bulk of problems, but uh, I would like to mention one more. The problem of communication remains extremely um, important. Uh, uh, we uh, uh, do not know how to bring together all the stakeholders, where to get uh, information on a timely basis, how to get knowledge about the best practices, about uh, the newly appeared textbooks. Uh, only after very good coordination, having developed good communication strategy, which will, would allow us to remain in close contact, we will be able to formulate strategy. This will be a comprehensive strategy comprising both uh, big and small steps. It would require huge resources from the state. But if the state understands that Ukrainian language uh, development should be one of the state priorities and, uh, and to this strategic goal, all our tasks should be subordinated, then we will gain a real success. So uh, developing the strategy of small and big combined steps uh, 
will be able to move. Uh, in the recent past, we had uh, a huge uh, problem with Ukrainian language schools in Russia. We also have good examples like Canada, but this only uh, will bring the following problems. So I would like to thank to the organizers for raising this problem, for bringing it into the light and devoting it much attention. Irina, thank you so much. Uh, I had to interrupt to you. We have only six minutes left. Uh, we have a lot of questions to answer, but uh, I wanted to give you the floor because of your huge optimism and enthusiasm. And uh, now we, we have to switch to Q&A session. Um. We won't be able to answer all the questions. I would like to propose to formulate, because we are living in post-COVID world, it may go online, in writing, and those questions that were sent to us to the page of uh, Ukraine Crisis Media Center. I believe that these questions will be answered on the pages here or through Facebook pages. This is logical. But we will take several questions. I will voice them. Thank you for your speeches. Denis Dushan, I live in Poland. Often, what certificates we may get and when people understand that uh, you may study language, but you won't be able to, prov you won't be provided with the certificate. Tatiana Zelizniak, good afternoon. Where can I get methodological guidance? Uh, to teach Ukrainian abroad, who may provide this methodological help, dear colleagues. I think that the best is to address to Irina. They have the most powerful educational institution concerning teaching Ukrainian as foreign language abroad. Irina, do you understand? this, what you brought on yourself. So, please, uh, you may provide my email address and we will be able to be in contact. Uh, Ms. Paranomarenko, please tell us about the curricula of the Sunday school and how to get at least minimum financing for the school. This is... I may write the name because this name is long. So this is called image program in short. Good afternoon, greetings from uh, Ukrainian studies from uh, Cambridge University. It's how we can get additional financing from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and uh, uh, to whom we should address them. It depends on uh, the sphere you uh, need to finance. Uh, uh, you may address the um, uh, uh, program. And uh, uh, Tara Shevchenko University, or I do not understand what is the country. Should the Ukrainian schools be active? Because we hear about financing for such schools for the first time. This is Catalan language. This is greetings from Barcelona. 
uh, foreign diplomatic institutions on their pages once a year. They provide an announcement through Facebook. You should follow Facebook pages. In Barcelona, we have general consulate. You should follow the announcements once a year. We always announce the launch of the programs for the next year. This is not only about schools, but also um, this is about organizations that are officially registered. They provide their wishes about implementation of the projects they want to implement next year. As I understand, this is the last question. Ganna Schweitz, um, associate professor. Uh, chair of Ukrainian and Russian languages as foreign languages. This is heavy colonial heritage. Uh, so uh, this is from um, Shevchenko University. Um, do you plan the support of popularization of Ukrainian language and programs abroad? Uh, these programs for foreigners and the introduction of state uh, stipends uh, to learn Ukrainian language as foreign language in Ukraine, in the faculties or in uh, foreign language courses. This is a question to the National Commission, but maybe together with the Ministry of Education, we should elaborate the strategy and we will think through how to popularize not only Ukrainian language abroad, but also how to popularize Ukrainian language as foreign language in Ukraine. And uh, uh, Ukrainian state earned about 9 billion on foreign students, 9 milli billion grivnas in 2018. We earned this money on foreign students and the Ukrainian language as foreign language is a part of the story. This is a task, a challenge together with the Ministry of Education and Science, the National Commission will work in this direction starting 2021. Thank you very much, Arisa. I would like to thank once again for organizing this event. Uh, we thank the Ukrainian Institute, the National Commission on Standards of uh, State Language, supported by the Ministry of Education and the Ukraine Crisis Media Center. We will continue our communication online. I hope that uh, this communication will continue because this is in our common interests. Thank you. Uh,